Okay. okay. What we're going to do now is a presentation of the situation as we see it from the Friends of Earth's legal point of view. Uh, there's no point in hiding the fact that we want the original plan, which is a maximum of five storeys uh, and a lesser population, particularly in view of the fact that we have hopeless public transport infrastructure. We already know from the point of view of We already know from the railways that in the peak hour Erskineville station is 40% over capacity now without putting any more people into the area. The two boys, the two Andrews here are going to cover that off. When that's finished, we will then have a Q&A session, hopefully with a little bit of decorum attached to it. Good evening, everyone. Thank you again for coming. I make a hat trick of Andrews. My name is Andrew Marshall. <laughs> Thanks to the ANZ Bank, I and my partner have a long-term commitment to this area, which is why I'm a member of Friends of Israel. What I'd like to do first, Andrew and I are going to tag team through this presentation. We're not going to go into terribly much fine detail. We can do that in question and answer. We already have a lot of information at our fingertips. If you ask us something we don't know, we'll find it out and we'll put it up on the website to let you know. But there's a lot of information to try to get across, so we're going to be relatively brief. First off, I think it's important everybody actually knows what we're talking about. People are very confused as to what makes the Ashmore area, the estate, the precinct, which plans are involved. This first slide shows us the general area. Here we are in the Ashmore Estate and we're just actually currently up here, right by the station. The reason that this is important is because it's not just the Ashmore Estate that is being developed. All around this area, there are large developments that are happening. There is, especially over here in Green Square, Zetlands, Waterloo, uh, possibly up on the other side, over here. These are all going to affect our area, whether we like it or not, just from the spillover of it. Australian Technology Park is another example of that, which is affecting Alexandria residents right now. So don't think it's that we're just concerned about this, but this is in our absolute local area, so that's why we're talking specifically to this tonight. And this is the actual Ashmore estate. You possibly think it only applies to the industrial area. That is just the actual undeveloped part of the estate. It does run the... That area there is the wall of the industrial area. This section has already been developed or is existing housing. So it runs all the way from Ashmore Street down to Coulson Street where Sydney Park Village, Zedix and the Verve Apartments are. This is a schematic showing the whole area. So this is the Ashmore Estate. The area in here between Coulson and East Street is largely existing housing, some of which is currently undeveloped. This section down here, which is the Brinkman's, uh, the Brightman's Transport Company. Macquarie Goodman we already know about. The motto and the glow complexes and all the rest of this is also undeveloped. This area here in red is the Leighton's proposal. This is where you would do the cut through walk if you come from this area to cut through to get up to the railway. The railway line runs down along that side there. We are always looking north in these schematics. This is what we are fighting here. The proposal to go up to nine storeys or above, and we should always stress that, we know that council is wishing to put it to nine storeys, but this is not certain that that's what will actually happen. It is ringed by conservation areas. It is our position that putting nine storeys and above in there cannot be in sympathy with the existing conservation and heritage areas that ring it on every side except for City Park Village where I live and Verve and there. I should also say, uh, Friends of Erskineville, completely not against this being developed. It's fantastic that it will be developed. I live in an apartment block. Andrew lives in an apartment block. We're big fans of apartment blocks. It's the scale and the nature of the development that is important here. Now, let's have a 
quick little run through as to what's happened with Council over the years. It is confusing. So, in February 2005, you can see here, just from the colours, there was originally, again we're looking, always looking north, this is the Macquarie Goodman section, now just Goodman section here, Layton's over there. You can see from the colour codes, this is all the top stories on here. It's five with a little bit of six story. Most of the rest of it is all two to three stories. Absolutely wonderful, with a lot of work that went in by council to produce this report. They did a fantastic job and that should be acknowledged. They consulted very widely. Then, in 2006, in the February, this is what actually comes through. And you can see they actually responded. And the, the six-storey buildings that were here have actually gone. And they've dropped them down to only five storeys. So the maximum that went through in February 2006 was actually five-storey buildings, with most of them being below that. Next slide. Now, here we skip forward to 2008. This is after the state, uh, the council had been directed by the state government with new population forecasts to say you must prepare for a certain increase in Sydney City Council. Be mindful of that because technically we're in Sydney City Council, although how many people think we're actually part of the city? I certainly don't. We're in a West. But legally we're part of Sydney City Council. So we fell under their increase. And here it is with eight-storey buildings, nine-storey buildings scattered all over the place. This then had some amendments put through to it, and we see there are even more nine-storey buildings. There are three nine-storey buildings here, eight-storey buildings all around. It's quite different. Again, then in September, they amend the plan slightly, and you can see uh, that the difference here is that uh, this building has come down from uh, six to four, uh, there has been, these buildings have come out a bit. Uh, they, they changed the configuration around a bit, but essentially it's still the nine story. Again, to refresh all your memory, I'm sure a lot of you were here for the school meeting last March. This was the Goodman's proposal, which we absolutely do not want to see, and we have to keep fighting. Do not think that is dead and buried. It isn't. Can we come to the next one? This is the latent development. This is the one that is up in the top corner of the estate as you cut through to go through to the um, train. It's where the Sydney Water Works was, right by the desalination plant where they built the thing. So actually here, this, one is this is north. north, north yes. looking south. Yep. So this is Ashmore Street running along here. It's going to be what they are wishing to have is the eight storey, which largely fits in with Council's 2009 draft that they would like to see approved. It's not gazetted, they would like that to be the one that goes through. It's eight storey buildings across here, a little bit of a three storey building, which when we spoke with Leighton said was to allow sunshine and light into that apartment well. But of course, it then meant that they increased the seven storey building to eight storey building all the way around it. As well, we have these uh, seven storey buildings sitting across here. So this is this area here that we're talking about. The other thing to note within this whole area, I should briefly say, it's going to be developed over the course of the next 10 to 15 years. That is because it is a mixture of two lots owned by Goodman's, the lot that's now owned by Layton's, another large lot owned, which is where Kelly Country is, uh, that building, and the rest of it is all individual strata units that will eventually come up over the course of the next 10 years or so. It's not all going to be developed at once. This is just a sketch where the thing to note here, so we're actually looking down from Ashmore Street and Mitchell Road. Sydney Park Road is up over here. There's the um, Sennix Tower up over there. This is all the relatively low four to five storeys, where here is the glow apartments and we've got these relatively low buildings here. If we come to the next one, this is what council is wishing to have. Eight, nine storey buildings on all of the main roads. On, uh, they will tell us that having eight and nine storey buildings at these corners here helps to define the corner. I don't know about you, but I can tell my mother a corner of two streets. It's two streets meeting at 90 degrees. So, what will this mean in terms of population? 
let's have a look at what actually happened. Here are the dwelling targets. This is what has been put onto the various councils. Sydney City Council has been asked by the state government to find nearly an 80% increase in people. And yet, if we look at the increases for the south or for the inner west, they're very much less. I would put it to you, we're not actually part of the city. We're not part of the CBD. We happen to fall under the City of Sydney Council because South Sydney was subsumed into it several years ago. That's the only reason we're actually more like the inner west. Now, currently in Erskineville, at 2006 in the census done by the Australian Bureau of Statistics, there were 3,500 dwellings with a population of 6,500. We can allow there'll be several hundreds more people since then because there has been development in the area. There's approximately, according to the council plan of the nine storeys, that there'll be about another 3,000 odd dwellings going on top of that. At the council rate of 1.8, person per dwelling, which actually fits in very well with the number of population divided by the dwellings, so they've essentially taken that from the ABS and the census data, so that's fine. This will give us approximately double the population in the area now, with no concomitant increase in infrastructure to be able to cope with that. As well as, remember at the back of your mind, the Redfern Waterloo development, there's an 18 storey building going up on uh, Redfern by Redfern Station with another two right next to it that haven't been started building yet. There's development happening everywhere. Now, let's have a look at the reason that they say that they can go up to nine storeys. It's because, this is the motto building, if you're not familiar with it, it's on the corner of Eve and McDonald Street right next to where Kelly Country is, if you've been there, on the southern side of the industrial part of the estate. That is the seven-storey limit that was actually behind control at the time that Andrew spoke to before. This is the lift well up on top, and of course modern lift technology means you don't actually have to have that anymore. You don't have to have a bubble sitting on top of a building to have a lift well. If this had been built now, that section probably wouldn't be there because it would be poor design. And then on top of that again is a comms tower. I don't actually know what's in the comms tower. If it is things for um, Optus and Telstra mobile phones, they also sit on the sides of buildings. I get, maybe it's a repeater station for ASIO, I have no idea. <laughs> but that's the reason why that extra two storeys, which is nothing to do with the inhabitation of the dwelling in terms of people living there itself. It is purely to do with the fact of, look, it's nine storeys high. Now we can all go to nine storeys because it's not going above an existing dwelling. This is where we then have, this is from council minutes, Nine storeys is the same height as the tallest point. They're being strictly factual. But further down in here, sorry, if we can just go back, sorry, there, at point five, we actually see they do say the building height for Motto at 80th Street is seven storeys. It's a bit of a contradiction. They're admitting that the building, the residence, is seven storeys, but they're using the nine storeys to get through what they wish. Now, I'll pass to him. I know um, I'm going to speak about uh, flooding and traffic and parking. Um, and uh, I know a lot of people are very passionate about uh, traffic and parking, but actually in the course of my sort of research, I discovered that the flooding is, uh, is a very serious issue. Uh, this is a photo taken in June 2010, and um, just beyond, on the other side of this uh, truck is, 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 uh, is the deep spot, and I think it's about 0.8 metres there. Um, just, uh, you know, from day to day, in most situations, it's, it's at the very minimum sort of uh, dangerous and unpleasant and slippery and so on. You have to walk around and stuff. Um, but anyway, uh, this is um, part of the... This PMF is peak mean flood, and this is a recent study uh, done, 2008, that shows what could happen in a peak mean flood. This is kind of a flood that might... This is the maximum probable flood. It's a little, you know, about a bit over a 100-year type event. And uh, this is with the proposed plan that we're facing at the moment. The detention basin would be full with three metres of water. 
three metres of water in the detention basin slash park. Um, down here's the other deepest point, and it's about uh, 2.5 metres here. And interesting, and I'll come to this later, a lot of the part along here is 1.5 metres high, and this will require a kind of neighbourhood on stilts kind of effect. Um, this is from the Leighton's um, proposal, where we're facing uh, up uh, very soon. And you can still see that, I mean, there is a slight reduction in some of the hazard, but there's still um, high hazard areas here. And the definition of high hazard is possible danger to life and limb, evacuation by trucks, difficult, and able-bodied adults would have difficulty waiting safety, potential for significant damage to buildings. So, we all like that. Um, yeah, here's some uh, council minutes and stuff. Um, the, the drainage system that we have is only capable of dealing with a three to five year uh, flood. My understanding is that you know, once you go beyond a three to five year flood, you start to have large overland flows. But given that that 0.8 metres that you saw with the car happened a year and a half ago, I mean, was that really a three to five year event? Maybe that's a more regular sort of event. Um, but low priority, nevertheless, nevertheless, that's a really serious problem. Low priority has been given to the upgrading of the system. Um, and so regardless of the approach that they're having, this current approach, yeah, um, well, uh, the overland flow paths will not significantly change the flood-affected nature of the site. So you need some kind of more deeper, proper solution which involves actually um, having better stormwater drainage and you know, pipes and tunnels underneath. Um, yeah, the 2006 report. Um, the council quotes this 1.2 figure here a lot, but, but actually 1.7 is the deepest uh, point where you saw that truck. Um, and then the peak depth is 2.7, although in the detention basin that will be through. Um, yeah, and so in Cardinal's report, this is that goes into the 2006 plan, which is current at the moment. They're saying, look, you better um, tell people that the road network will become hazardous, the detention area will become hazardous, and within buildings, vertical evacuation may be required. So I think that means just go up. Yeah. Um, oh, and uh, it's not necessarily safe for children. Oh, they're saying here that they have to adjust what's considered safe just to kind of, you know, make it better. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, although pipe upgrades result in this system, so they say that the policy of Sydney Water is a 20-year flood event. You should be able to cope with that. That's their policy. Um, but they're not going to install that. They're not going to do that. I can't find the money. Um, it will cost $24 million for the entire Money Street subcatchment. So I was thinking, what's the Money Street subcatchment? And um, I didn't quite find it straight. But there was other stuff that they were saying, you need to investigate this, you need to look at that, you know, look at a few other things. Um, yeah, so the Money Street cut subcatchment um, includes a lot of the area from the technology park down. Um, it's got 14,000 people in it. Uh, and this is the area here. So it all basically flows down here. Um, this is the lowest kind of point here, Colson and Mitchell, and it flows into Alexandria Canal here. And um, next one. Uh, so I'm wondering, like, what, will the Julius Detention Basin Park, will it suffer from a soggy park syndrome? <laughs> and this is just, you know, the kind of, uh, this is just photographed from Cursova number one. Like, uh, it's a bit, you know, it gets a bit soggy. I, I'm wondering what it's going to be like. Um, yeah, so the Clouston Associates, they say that uh, it's going to be, it could be high water table. It's only about one and a half to two and a half metres below the, the uh, surface of the, of the ground. Um, it might be permanently damp, may release contaminants into the park. Uh, excavation in potentially contaminated land may pose a risk to the community. Yeah, yeah so um, here's some of the actual current um, things that you have to do in order to allow for this deep flood thing. The ground floor of buildings um, where you have shops and people living and so on has to be up at this level, down at that corner. You have to be above the PMF level, the peak mean flood level. Um, that's the lowest you can build and live on. So that's, uh, and this causes detachment from the street. This has been uh, acknowledged as, and the, these shops here have been closed for a very long time because so people are not interested in going up those stairs. And you've got to have a disabled ramp as well. That's a lot of extra infrastructure that you need. Um, and here's the globe where I live, and here's like the, uh, uh, the, you can't go too deep as well. You've got acid sulfate soils and, the, and, and the water table and stuff, so you can only go about um, one and a half metres down, two metres or so. So the garage actually faces up here, and so water flows over into here, and we pump it back up to street level in the globe building. And uh, the late proposal, because it's fairly high density, everyone wants a parking space, you can't go down any further, 
you've got to have a two level car park, car park. And one of those levels, this is the bottom level, so you've got to have another one that's above ground. And this is an ugly precedent that I look out to from my bedroom, where you've got two level car park, an above ground car park. And I think this is the only one that exists in Erskineville. And that's what they're proposing also in the latest development. Um, now this is what you could have though, if you had a proper drainage system. This would be McDonald Street. Okay, you'd have two rows of trees here. Um, you'd stretch out this bit, you'd have a nice um, cycleway here, you have pedestrians here, they have awnings here. That's, that's option one, but they had to be rejected because of water. Um, yeah, so here's the Clueston Associates thing. Yeah, we'd like to have option one, but you know, you can't because the one in 100 flood event, you know, you've got to have um, ramp, the level has to be 1.5 metres above the ground. Um, and they also say, um, yeah, we've been investigating that, we think it would cost $24 million. No time frame for the implementation of an upgrade has been proposed. Uh, and even the developers want this, you know, so... Yeah, so it cost $24 million for a Money Street catchment upgrade, the whole, up, the whole catchment. Uh, and just to compare, you might think that's a large figure, but the desalination plan cost $1.9 billion. And it's about to start overflowing and waste fresh water at the moment, as uh, was noticed in the paper this week. Yeah, and then they just recently, this is only just 2000, uh, I think, 10 or 11, they go, oh, you could put a culvert, you could put an extra bit of piping just down at the bottom, and it would cost $3.8 million. And um, yeah, that would um, have an effectiveness of three and uh, potential to benefit flooding, remove the need for detention in Ashmore Street master plan. So no deep uh, park, just to a flat park at street level, if you spend 3.8 million. Okay, keep going. Um, traffic and parking. Okay, um, yep. So I, I did this kind of as a joke, and then later on I, um, I, I kind of calculated back to see, you know, um, in, in the Glow building, other buildings, around that we live in, it's, it's 90 to 95% of our apartments have a car. Now, the parking allocated in the area is about 60%. So that's about a 30, 35% difference. And if you take the total number of apartments and work it out, each car in this diagram represents about five cars that will need to be parked overnight. And there's even tiny ones that are down there. That just, you know, it's, it's, Yeah, um, the, and, and, and my understanding is that the last proper traffic survey done was only in 2005. And I'll ask the guys later on if that is uh, correct. But uh, the 2005 study used 2002 data, and it was prior to the completion of Globe, Modern and Star Printing. So I know that a lot's happened since then. And uh, so we've got 20,000 cars crossing over uh, Erskineville Road um, every day. Yep. Um, and the, the one thing that the, the, the mail came out from the council this week was they said, oh, you know, if you get rid of the industrial estate, at least you won't have the cars and trucks that go in there. That'll be a reduction. <laughs> well, in fact, the total amount that you'll get will be three to four times what you currently have. So, like, we're not going to really, you mean we lost, we, we're minus one, but plus four. So, anyway. Um, yeah, keep going. Um, and there's a Bunnings, the largest Bunnings in Australia, just to be built like a couple of streets away. Um, the, you know, the largest like here in the Southern Hemisphere, it's been built in Tempe. Um, yeah, so I just wonder about those. And I, and I would like to know if there has been a detailed traffic study done since 2005. That's a question that I have for later. And a micro simulation, as Jamie Parker has been suggesting in Leica, sounds like a good idea. That was, uh, it's a very detailed study that helps you really assess what, what's going on. Um, contamination is very brief. Um, there's lead and mercury, um, benzopyrene, other stuff there that has to be remediated. Um, and maybe they can do it properly, I'm not really sure, but I just noticed this one thing, uh, is that um, Leighton's claim that this site is not in a zone or area identified um, as having wetlands. I thought, well, there's those wetlands there, but it wouldn't flow into that, would it? It wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't go up into City Park, would it? <laughs> oh, right, so it comes down this channel, and they pump it up into there to clean it up. Look, I might be wrong here, but I, this is just what I discovered. So, um, uh, I just wonder if you're going to get lead and mercury there. It's probably not the case, but I just would like to really know for sure. Um, other issues that I saw of, um, what about the subsidised or public housing? They're going to investigate that. I mean, we're a diverse community. We have all people with all kind of socioeconomic backgrounds. So shouldn't there be some 
you know, some uh, allowance for that. Um, the Metropolitan Plan only increased the requirements by 11%, but we went from five to nine storeys, like one and a, you know, an extra 50%, so that doesn't seem in line. Um, you know, the local eBay pickup, they call it the post office, you know, everyone's picking up their parcels from those lovely people there. You know, they're so overworked. I, I think we need an extra post office, a community hall, because we like to get together and have good community meetings. Um, the childcare, the library link has been proposed, but nothing there. There's health centres, no funding yet for around the Sydney Road underpass, so they want to go and make a, a gap through there, which would be quite nice, so you can sort of go straight across to where that uh, kid's bike area is. Um, we, you know, we need wheelchair access. What about a sudden entrance to the station? Then you can come straight up from the latents or you know, walk from the new site straight into the station. Um, no promises for extra public transport. The Illawarra line just goes through slowly. You could almost jump on, but you know, it doesn't stop. <laughs> um, developer donations uh, have been made from Leightons and Macquarie Goodman um, to uh, Living Sydney, which is sort of a front group that sort of distributes funding to, to councillors. Um, and, and they're currently under the investigation by the Federal Police. For, you would have seen this, uh, this week for breaches in Iraq. So, um, yeah, like the Australian Week War thing all over again. Um, and, and, and this is my final point is that um, we have a long history of uh, activism in Newtown. Uh, we, have the, we saved the school, we saved the public housing estate, we saved the park, the green beds thing. Um, you know, people get active in this area, and um, yeah, you can't mess with us. So, uh, you know, bring it on. Um, we're here today, and, and partly because of Mike's great efforts. And in the Friends of Ursaville, you will have an extension for a month. That's why you're here today, and this submission deadline hasn't closed. So, um, yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One, we don't accept the nine-storey plan, and we want to go back to the four- and five-storey plan. Second resolution says that we accept that the original Gazette control plan should be the one that we have. The third resolution says do not make any changes to the original plan until a full simulated traffic and coordinated transport study has been undertaken to assess the impacts of such an enormous increase in population. Does that include parking? Oh, yes. 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 The required traffic and coordinated transport study must be specific to the Ashmore estate development and include a full analysis of the present overcrowded and inadequate public transport infrastructure and a detailed plan of amendment to that infrastructure to allow, the pro pro allow for the proposed increase in population. The fourth one, says that before we do anything, we want Sydney Water to spend that 24 million and upgrade the piloting system across that estate. There is no point in building buildings and then in 10 years time, somebody coming along saying, we've got to rip all of this up again because we've got to put new pipes through here. We've all been through that in our own streets and we know the mess that it creates and it should be done before it's in any <coughs> constructions undertaken. The fifth one says we want an urban design study to be undertaken specifically for the site and its surrounds and using the services of the city's already urban design consultant which have, have not been used up until this point in time. The sixth one says, and at your point over here, we have an area where we're going to lose employment and residents request an analysis of the social, economic and environmental impacts of that loss. And what employment is going to be available in the area for people who move into these new buildings. And the last one says we want a working group of the state government, the residents and the council called the Ashmore Group and they are to be the consultative group on every aspect of every development related to the Ashmore Group. through these one by one. Uh, I've explained them in brief, you've got them in front of you in writing. Is there any objection in the audience to any of those resolutions being put forward to the Council, the Premier and the Minister for Planning? Just, just one. Oh, it's one 
Yes. Can I ask my residents' request rather than residents' demand in another request? Demand rather than request? No. I don't think demand's the right approach, to be honest with you. I don't think it'd get us very far. Yeah. So. Um, which resolution, Mark, I'm going to run? So, we've already been through that in 2006. It's a waste of money. If we go back to that plan, it's been done. I think that's, that's it's been done. It's five years old now. You're talking about transport. The 2006 plan. design plan. Oh, and it was not I specific think we have to Ashmore. Revisit, we have to revisit. If you're talking about an increase in, in population and the densities, you have to revisit and see how you can all no, The 2006 so use 2000. Oh, we'd go back to the original. Yeah, I think we should revisit yeah, the 2006 that. and see how it stands. Yeah. Now, the statistics in that actually were from the census in the year 2000. Yeah. yeah. So it's not five years out of date, yeah. it's 11 yeah. years out of date. Well, I think it's... Any other yeah. comments? The lady's observation about school is so pertinent to the actual word, the word benefits that I'm hearing. I didn't hear it. Did I miss it? And the observation... The word school is not school. in there. No, the, school, the word school is not in there. Would it be a good but idea? Part of the social and economic yeah, consequences... Yeah. Yeah. Why did it out to the theory of infrastructure? Yeah. Fair enough. Anybody else? No? Well, that's it. It's now nine o'clock. Thank you very much for your attendance. As I said earlier, we have buckets here. If some of you want to put a couple of bob in there to help us out with the cost. But as I said earlier, I'd appreciate it very much if we had your support in the form of membership, because at this point in time, we're funding it out of our own pockets. Thank you very much and we'll be in touch.